Now the 50 millimeter lens, particularly on a Leica camera, is the stuff of legend. And that's in no small part down to a certain French photographer. Now 50 millimeter is the first focal length that I used when I started my professional career in the late 1980s. And I've owned more 50 millimeter lenses than any other focal length. The lens was so important to me that I actually had backups and backups. The 50 mil focal length has earned me the most money, won me the most awards, and I reckon I've shot literally hundreds of thousands of images with that focal length. I've shot everything from weddings, portraits, landscapes. But when I started to take street photography seriously about a decade ago, I put all my 50 millimeters away and I decided that I was gonna shoot street photography with wider angles. But the thing is you can't spend the best part of three decades using a lens and then suddenly ignore it. Just before the pandemic, I'd started to bring the 50 millimeter back into the street work that I was doing. And while the 50 millimeter isn't the easiest lens to use on the street, when you get the picture right, to me, there's nothing like it. Now, as a street photographer using a 50 millimeter lens, if I'm honest, it's not the most exciting lens to use out on the street. It doesn't do anything to your photographs except just record them. It doesn't have the compression that a telephoto has or the, the wide angle distortion that say a 28 might have. And for me, that's one of its greatest strengths because it means the photographer has to create the interest in the photograph. It's pretty much a what you see is what you get type of lens. So if I'm walking down a street and I see a scene and there's a group of people and I like the position of the people within the frame. I know that all I've got to do is bring the camera up to my eye and take the photograph and that spatial arrangement between the people in the frame will remain pretty much how I saw it. Now, if I see the same scene with say a wide angle lens, I've got to adjust my position and adjust my framing to make sure those elements kind of line up in the way that I first saw. And because I don't have to readjust my positioning in relation to the scene, this makes the 50 millimeter an incredibly fast lens to use on the street. And if you've ever seen those videos of Cartier-Bresson up on his toes taking pictures, you'll see just how quickly this lens can be used. Now my operating distance with a 50 millimeter is completely different to what it is with a wide angle lens. It's easy to fill the frame without getting too close with a 50 millimeter. It gives my images much more of a voyeuristic feel to them rather than an immersive feel, which you might get with a wide angle lens. I always feel that I'm looking at a scene with a 50 millimeter and I always feel that I'm part of the scene with a wide angle. Focusing a manual 50 millimeter lens, particularly on the street, does pose one or two problems. And over the years, I've tried to work around ways of being able to take pictures quickly and efficiently without having to spend too much time messing around focusing. So generally speaking, I'll use zone focusing with a 50 millimeter, and this isn't anywhere near as efficient as it is with say something like a 35 or a 28 mil. The tolerances are a lot tighter. So what I tend to do is set my lens at F8 or F11, set the distance to five meters or 10 meters, depending on where the subject is. There's usually enough depth of field there to keep everything largely in focus. But as I say, the tolerances are a lot less with a 50 mil. So if I get my distances wrong, the chances are I'm gonna get part of the frame which I want in focus, out of focus, and that's not good. And also as well, it's not always practical to use F8 or F11 on the street. So the only other way around this is to actually physically focus. And I got a little technique that I use that helps me to focus really quickly. Basically on any Leica lens or most manual focus lenses, when you get to infinity, there's a hard stop. You can't move the lens any further. You can probably hear it. So when I'm out shooting, I've got in the habit of moving my lens to that hard stop. The reason for that is when I come to focus the next photograph, I'm starting from the same position. So I know that all I have to do to focus the photograph is to slightly adjust the focusing ring in one direction only to get it into focus. And that really speeds up focusing time. So when I'm out shooting, I'm on hard stop, I see something, I bring the camera up to my eye, turn the focusing ring one direction very slightly, take the photograph. It's a lot faster than going backwards and forwards with the focusing ring trying to find the focus. Now the advantage of having a small lens like this little Sumicron is that obviously the focusing ring is very, very small. The distance from infinity to in focus is absolutely minuscule and obviously you can make that distance very fast. If you have a bigger lens, then obviously it's gonna take you a little bit more time to get to that, that distance that you want to be focusing at. Now, the other thing to remember is that you need to keep your shutter speed high when using a 50 millimeter lens. Camera shake is a problem. I prefer to keep mine at around about 500th of a second, ideally a thousandth of a second when I'm on the street, just to 
stop any sort of camera shake. Now, if you're using a high resolution sensor on your camera, any camera shake is gonna be exaggerated. So a lot of the Leica cameras allow you to reduce the resolution of the camera. What I would always recommend is that if you have one of these cameras, use the option to reduce the resolution of the camera. It will make your life a lot easier on the street, trust me. Now with a 50 millimeter, I often find myself using a vertical composition, more so than I do with a wide angle lens. And I just think some of this is down to wanting to create space within a frame. Obviously the field of view of the 50 is quite tight. Turning the camera vertically can create that space for you. And finally, there are a lot of 50 millimeters out there. You can get vintage ones, you can get modern ones which are super sharp, you can get stupidly fast ones, 50 millimeters that are used in cinematography that you can put on your cameras. There's a huge marketplace for 50 millimeter lenses and you can almost go and buy a 50 mil to match the way that you want to see the world. Now we've got a couple of 50 mils here. We have a Summicron, which I tend to use most of the time, which is a really fast lens, but it also flares quite nicely as well if you get it right. And then Sarah uses the Not Deluxe. Now the Not Deluxe is an F1 lens and it has a look like no other lens if you use the lens wide open. Now, I've used it on the street a couple of times and it really does give something very different. If you're in the market for a 50 millimeter, do a bit of research, have a look at the vintage marketplace in particular. There's some really fantastic 50 mils out there. So there you go. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please think about subscribing to the channel and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.